Well, welcome to the summit. Feel free to share your uh, screen and show us the insights that you have for today. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself briefly. I'm sure. Ruban Kalasovska-Vilyanovski. I'm BizBiz Content and Marketing Manager, and I'm super excited to be part of the second Prospecting and Outreach Summit uh, and share the floor with so many renowned speakers from all around the globe. So today I'll be talking about a really interesting topic, which is not so accidentally a per, uh, a favorite topic of mine that is the right kind of messages that work for a successful LinkedIn outreach campaign. So to start with, I would like to differentiate two, two different things when creating content. So that is that content in marketing is really different from content in sales. So the first and the foremost thing is uh, that content in marketing is distributed as one to many, while content in sales is distributed as one to one. So uh, the whole strategy, the whole uh, language that we use and everything is needs to be tailored to our target audience. So one of uh, the many things which are different from uh, in content in marketing and content in sales is, is that Content in marketing is crafted for a broader audience aiming to maximize uh, reach and, all is, and build brand awareness and all that is done through mass appeal. Now, the content that is created for marketing purposes is uh, mainly educational, informative, and is distributed uh, to many channels such as LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and so on. And the metrics are mainly focused on impressions and the overall engagement of the audience. While in sales, the thing is totally different. So uh, the content in sales needs to be personalized. So it needs to be tailored towards uh, the specific uh, prospect to their main K, uh, KP points. Uh, and it, the whole concept is based on relationship building. I would like to put the stress on this because a relationship building in sales is the most important thing. So uh, all our content that we create for a LinkedIn outreach, it needs to be problem solving. The, uh, the communication is more direct or one-to-one. -one. And uh, the focus is here is on conversion rates, uh, response rates and the overall movement of the prospect down the sales funnel. So uh, my focus today will be on uh, LinkedIn outreach as we are specializing in, in that. So uh, what I would like to start with is that uh, how first impressions worked uh, work on LinkedIn. So uh, how to craft meaningful messages that resonate and increase prospect engagements. So like in every other aspect of our lives, first impression are the lasting impressions. So uh, they um, set the food for the overall relationship that we're going to have with the client. Uh, so that is the most important thing that we need to pay special attention to. So in LinkedIn outreach, as I mentioned, the really important thing is personalization. So when we are reaching out to a prospect, we need to uh, tailor the message to be to specifically resonate to this prospect. So we need to mention their name, their role, or some, I don't know, uh, specific achievement that they had recently, maybe. Uh, how you can do this really easily, like you can go to, through their LinkedIn profile, see what have they published so far, and you know, this way you show genuine interest and care towards the prospect. Another thing that we need to pay special attention to is the value proposition. So uh, all our content and uh, our solution is to bring value to the prospect. So the prospects need to know what it, what's in it from them. Uh, the, our messages need to be uh, clear and concise. So all the tone of the messages needs to be simple so they can understand it and uh, they don't feel overwhelmed at any stage of the process. Uh, further down the, the message sequence, we need to have call to action. So we need to express the next desired steps that we wish for the prospects to undertake. And we need to be really clear with that, whether that's a call or a free a trial or to explore some specific resource. So this is a professional, LinkedIn is a professional platform, so we need to keep a professional tone at all means, but pay attention that uh, the tonality, the overall tonality of your conversation shouldn't be too formal because the formal communication is more for email rather than for LinkedIn. Uh, the content, of course, needs to be relevant to the prospect's industry, to their uh, specific K pay points, and so on. 
And uh, lastly, but not least, uh, we should have a clear follow-up plan so that we know uh, what are next, uh, our next steps. So uh, to leave the best possible impressions and spark meaningful uh, business engagement, we must know which audience we are targeting. So setting up this thing first, you know, we need to know who is our target audience. So after we know which is our target audience, we can then tailor the message towards them so they can speak directly to their key pain points. Uh, another thing that we, sh we should pay special attention to is to formulate a message strategy that works. So how we can do this? Of course, we need practice for this. We need uh, to, uh, to do a lot of trial and error in order to see what works. And of course, crafting the messages in style with, uh, with, uh, that resonate with our uh, prospect and uh, the channel of communication that we use. As I mentioned, LinkedIn and email are totally different platforms. So when we are crafting a strategy and we're crafting messages for this, uh, uh, these two, uh, two channels, the tone of voice needs to be different. So uh, when uh, tailoring a strategy for LinkedIn outreach, we should keep uh, at mind the campaign goals and the message goals. So uh, these two things are entirely different. For example, a campaign goal may be uh, to get them uh, on a call or to explore a specific resource or for them to explore some um, uh, I don't know, some ebook or some asset that we'll share. And the uh, the strategy for the messages is that the goal is to get them to respond, just that and nothing more. So we are not, you know, trying to sell in our messages. So when uh, we are defining our campaign goals, as I said, the first thing that we need to pay attention to is that we have a clear vision and we need uh, to have a target audience at mind at all times. Before, uh, before you know, we pour our, our time, energy, and resources into something that may not work. So, when it comes to uh, outreach messaging and copy crafting, we must pay, uh, have a clear idea and vision of our entire uh, outreach campaign, and and as well a, a clear vision and a goal for our uh, entire outreach message sequence. So, when crafting our uh, LinkedIn messages. We should have one clear question at, uh, at uh, with us at all times. So, to whom will my outreach messages resonate the most? So, I want uh, I want once again to to point out that this is when you have to uh, to uh, set your target audience in order to know how to craft your messages later, so they can speak directly to them and provoke a response and move them down the sales funnel. So the next thing I would like to discuss is the framework for message creation. This is a framework that we use in Bisbee and that has worked miraculously so far. We have tested, we have failed, we have tried with uh, over 500 clients and now we can you know, safely say that it works. So how does that look? Uh, when it comes to uh, the creating the message strategy, the most frequently asked questions uh, related to that is how many messages uh, do I need to send uh, to my target audience? How many messages will overwhelm them? How many messages are too much? What strategy should I use? What if they don't respond? What should I do next? How to, how to move them down the sales funnel and how to get the results that we all hope for, of course. Uh, so when uh, crafting the outreach messages, we should consider these three key things. And I really like to, I cannot stress this enough that when starting to create uh, messages, we should define the message style. So uh, when we are speaking to a CEO or a business owner or some entry level position at a company, we cannot use the same message. We cannot use the same formality, the same tone, the same vocabulary. Uh, we will end up sounding ridiculous, maybe. So another thing that we should, pay special attention to is, of course, the geography of our uh, target audience. So pay attention that, uh, you know, um, different cultures resonate differently and perceive messages differently. So uh, that is especially noticed in a written communication. And now we're, of course, using written communication. So, uh, for example, let's say we are targeting prospects in the UK. So, of course, we're going to, you know, uh, write them in uh, UK, in British English rather than, let's say, US. 
And uh, the last but not least, we should establish the, the, the communication channels that our target audience uses. So, for example, if we're seeing that our prospect doesn't, you know, it's not it's not so much active on LinkedIn, then uh, we shouldn't target him. We shouldn't write him on LinkedIn. We should, you know, maybe try email communication or something else, something you prefer to use. Another uh, crucial thing is the message quantity. So the number of messages is linked directly towards uh, your target audience and your business. So uh, this can vary up from one to two messages to uh, to four or, four or five, and that depends on the channels that you're using for uh, for communication. So, but keep in mind at all times that uh, quality beats quantity every time. So it doesn't matter if you're sending hundreds of messages to a prospect, if they don't address their specific uh, burning questions, their struggles, you're gonna end up nowhere, of course. So sometimes one to two messages can work splendidly. And sometimes, you know, 10 messages will get us nowhere. So this is really important, quality or quantity every time. Uh, and uh, another thing that I'd like to mention is, um, as I said, if we use, uh, if we are crafting just a LinkedIn campaign, four to five messages will suffice. We'll we'll do it. Uh, we'll do the trick. But if we're lose, uh, losing um, LinkedIn and email, then we should consider that this number should double. So also seven to eight messages, maybe. It depends. It depends. Uh, another thing is the how we start our campaign, how we start to to, to target prospects. This uh, thing will make or break your campaign. So LinkedIn conversation starters is a, a topic which I have discussed with my team and with clients in, in length. So um, here I have a visual representation of the wholesale of the sales funnel and after this uh you know uh setting up our ideal client persona then we start with the conversation starters so the conversation starters are just you know for connecting with people we are not here trying to sell them anything we are not trying to represent who we are how great we are or what we can do for them it's just a simple one liner like hey uh, i don't know john let's connect that will do the trick. And uh, I would like to show you, uh, because, you know, even though the entire LinkedIn process is, and the entire LinkedIn philosophy is based on a relationship building, still some people fail at this at all times. So don't get me wrong, uh, we have failed at this. That's why I'm speaking about this subject. So I would like, you know, to teach you how to do this, not the wrong way. So, uh, People which are targeting uh, certain prospects on LinkedIn, they want to skip the whole relationship building phase. And that is wrong because they are trying to sell to prospects right away. And who would like to buy from a total stranger who is trying to sell them something at the first step? So, you know, build your journey, get there. You will get there. You will get them on the call eventually. But, you know, take baby steps first. So uh, here are some examples, visual representations of how bad invitation messages look. So let's see what's wrong with this message. So I don't know this guy. I have, you know, got this example from the Internet. And this guy is clearly, you know, sending a, a, a sales pitch. So uh, first thing that I noticed here is, is the lack of personalization. So he doesn't target the, the prospect by their name and you know he's uh, uh skipping the whole relationship building phase and he's trying to pitch this person so why should should this person answer to him well, how, how can he, how can he trust him who is this guy and another bad example so this guy here has some level of personalization so I'll give him that. But another thing, you know, see the, the, the whole length of the message. So this is like an essay. This is not a message. You should not use that at any point of your of your outreach. Like who is going to read this? For example, if he was targeting me and I, I got this, he could be offering me, I don't know, millions of dollars here. I want to go, wouldn't go to the trouble of, of reading this. So uh, long messages, you know, key point here, bottom line is that long messages don't work like never, never in LinkedIn. Uh, OK, but, uh, you know, there is a way to do this right, because 
we have tried this don't get me wrong we have tried to pitch people right away from the very start you know we were learning we were targeting people we we didn't know the right way to do it so um, uh we have what we have found is that uh the right thing to do is to, to set uh, your foot through the door is you know just a simple one-liner like hey i don't know done show let's connect or here uh the guys are saying like hey person's name let's chat i've seen that you've done recently something that's that that, that will suffice that will do the magic that's that's great to start with and uh, when crafting the messages after the conversation starters the whole message sequence should be following these values so duality empathy credibility and offering free value i will go deeper into this of course and i have also a visual representation of how this uh framework four-step message structure looks like in bisbee so after the initial conversation starter after the the, the person has um, uh, connected with us we're sending the duality message so what does this mean duality well duality is uh here we go with as much human approach as possible you know we are all humans even though they have a big or shiny role they're humans in the end of the day so uh here we're uh stating um uh, one burning point of the prospect and we are uh you know uh stating two different opinions on that burning question so they can either agree or disagree on the topic and or they're not relevant either way you, you you're gonna get them to respond uh, at this stage they should be eager to respond so if they don't respond with a further of days of the of delay we are sending the empathy message so empathy is like the word itself means we are trying to express compassion towards this person so they have their struggles see what their struggle is say that you have been there you have been in their shoes you know what it's like you know the struggles you know the hustle you know you know that uh if they don't respond to this after uh, a couple of days we're sending uh, the credibility message so if they haven't uh, responded so far this may mean that you know they need some credibility boost so here this is the time where we say who we are our role what we have done we can uh, you know we have discovered that maybe one of the best things to do here is to mention some clients that we have worked so far you know to get the prospect to see that we have solved a problem like this in the past that we know what we're talking about and if they don't respond to this message of course this is the last call on linkedin that we send on this is a free value this is where we use the, the marketing support this is where we offer something for free to the, to the, the target audience so this is where we say like uh hey here is a free ebook or a testimonial or i don't know some uh case study that we might share to you know to get them we can even call uh even call them on a, on a free meeting to explore the topic further so that's that's it that's the last call on linkedin but sometimes this may not work of course and if this doesn't work the next thing that we do on in bsb so co coordinating the communication channels is that we send the first email so uh as i said earlier my focus is on, is on linkedin but we, we are also doing uh email outreach campaigns and uh the messages that we are crafting for email are a lot different from the messages that we're crafting on linkedin so they're more for formal more lengthy and so on so after they have not responded to our message sequence on linkedin then we're sending the first email with a couple of days of delay we are sending the second and the third and the fourth one and so on so th this can uh you know make or break your campaign but either way you gotta try you know how 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 will you know if you don't try of course and uh you know uh through your communication through your whole outreach uh message sequence you will after you set the target audience the ideal client persona craft the database you know send the conversation starters and once they have you know connected with you then you set, uh, then you will encounter the first obstacle the first obstacle is the response obstacle so this is uh you know the right time 
to ask them if they have a problem but you know don't just you know assume that they have a problem even though you're in the same industry you don't know what they're struggling with you are not in their shoes so ask them directly or you know go through their linkedin profile see what they have been posting about what are they struggling with so we're all humans let's you know let's chat uh after uh, um, another problem that you're going to uh, to encounter in your LinkedIn outreach journey is the problem obstacle. And uh, over practice and with the years, we have encountered that this is the uh, probably the, the trickiest part, uh, because at this stage, you know, they have to admit that they have a problem. And uh, we humans, we have a problem admitting that even to ourselves, let alone with a stranger. So uh, if you have successfully, you know, make them state that they have a problem, then we are moving to the next obstacle, which is the solution obstacle. The solution obstacle is uh, when you manage to convince them to, uh, you know, to say that they have a problem, then you have to, you know, convince them that you have the right solution for them. But, you know, don't go pitching them like, yeah, I have the right solution for the, for you. This this will work for you. You don't know that, you know, just ask them simple question. Uh, questions, what, what have worked so far for you? Uh, have you used any other providers? Uh, were you happy with the results you got? What else have you tried? And, you know, just explore deeply, go deeply into the subject. And uh, the last obstacle that you're going to encounter is the meeting obstacle. So this is the time to, you know, to with a long awaited sales pitch, but, you know, then don't make the mistakes of, uh, you know, pitching right away or make a, a classic sales pitch, but, you know, rather, uh, you know, get them on a call, explore further on the subject, see what they have done so far. And I also want to mention that throughout this whole sales funnel, marketing support is really important. So marketing can offer you with, uh, can give you testimonials, can give you uh, assets, can give you eBooks, case studies that will help the prospect move down the sales funnel and get them on the long awaited sales call, where the, the part where the sales team takes over. So. I have explained what has worked and what hasn't for Bisbee so far. And as I said, we have tried this many times on many clients. And uh, if you want to know more about this strategy, the whole outreach process that we're doing, you know, uh, you can buy, you can find this whole in uh, uh, the book Sweet List by Dan Shadimkov, which you can buy on Amazon with a special discount now for $1 uh, each, of the Kindle and the audio version. And you can also find that on danshadimkov.com. Thank you so much. Over to you, Dan. Muba, thank you very much for the insightful uh, presentation on, on the content. Uh, let me have a look. There were several comments. There were several questions and answers. So let's start one by one. Uh, oof, there are quite a lot, actually. <laughs> so <laughs> Great. Uh, let's hear it. So first one is, how can we know what are the pain points of a specific target audience so we can then create the content around it? Well, do your research, do your homework. You know, there are a lot of information on Google. Uh, the simplest, the simplest thing that you can do is, you know, uh, see a person's pain points, uh, see, uh, go through their LinkedIn profile, see their website, see if they have published something recently. Sometimes a simple uh, LinkedIn post can do the trick. You can see their, their, uh, their pains through that. Got it. Thank you. Um, another question was that how many messages are recommended without being perceived as a spammy approacher? Uh, as I said, sometimes quality beats quantity every time. Uh, sometimes one to two messages are enough. Can can do the trick and get the you know the uh, the recipient to respond. But uh, our recommendation for the whole message outreach sequence on LinkedIn is four messages. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, uh, done. I'm going one by one, so I wouldn't miss anyone. Uh, question to, to Buba. Do you think that the psychological side of the communication message content with the target persona crucial in LinkedIn conversation in order to reach our goal? Yeah, that, that can make or break your whole campaign. So, you know, you gotta know your prospects. 
you gotta know you we are all humans deep down and uh if you don't know what they're struggling with if you're if you sound like a robot if you sound spammy you know keep in mind that they're human that uh, they have the same struggle uh, we do they they have troubles you know balancing work and private life they have their issues on a daily level so get to know them first show them that you care show show them genuine interest that that will do the trick you know, don't just try to sell. Selling, uh, selling right, uh, right from the beginning will get you nowhere. If someone, if that, this has worked for 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 somebody, you know, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear it. <laughs> how this guy made it work. Got it. Uh, and another question was, what happens if we don't get a response from both ways? Because you had like first LinkedIn, then email. So what happens if they don't get a response from both ways? Well, you you continue with your life. <laughs> yeah, so, you cannot capture you can everybody. Try, uh, LinkedIn, you can try email. Uh, we use those channels for uh, for communication and for doing outreach. But if it doesn't work, you move on. Like like with every other aspects in life. Got it. Uh, there is another question from Olesia just coming in before I looked into the messages. But how to transform genuine interest into the right words? So how can you actually use the words to get that genuine interest? Well, it takes the right person to do so. This is a special skill. You know, uh, I'm always saying that content creators have a different mindset. They have to know, you know, to take uh, to take research and to take the pain points into words. So this is this is a special ta uh, talent. But you know, if you find more about uh, the, 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 the person that you're targeting, if you explore what they have been going through, what is the industry trend, what industry they're in, you can get there, you know, with, with, with practice, like everything else in life. With practice, you can craft the message that resonates with them. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Bubba. I have only one more question, actually, from yeah. Tatiana. Uh, what automation tools would you recommend to use for the follow-ups on LinkedIn? Uh, well, um, I'm not a fan of automation. I'm, you know, the content kind of girl. So the whole message sequence that we create is uh, manual. Maybe my colleague Natasha can go deeper into this. She will be, I don't know, a couple of hours from me now. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Perfect. Well, Buba, I see that we went over all, all the questions. So I really wanted to, to thank you again for, for the presentation. <laughs>